my coming sir assalamu alaikum sir assalamu alaikum ma'am never see thank you sir thank you are you fine yes sir comfortable yes sir, yes, sir. ready for the interview yes sir, sir. good what do you uh, what is the meaning of farwa uh, sir uh, farwa is an arabic word and its meaning is uh, like farawani and its meaning is abundance of something like of wealth of uh, of good luck and stuff foreign service of pakistan is your first choice yes sir as a uh, foreign service officer you posted abroad what will you do to improve the to promote the soft image of pakistan abroad our international image has flagged and for to improve the international image of pakistan first of all sir we have a very vibrant uh, middle class rising middle class then we have a very promising youth bulge we can basically extend the basic uh, these soft images of pakistan at the international level other than that sir uh, we have a very uh, promising tourism sector our, tur- our tourism sector is also very much promising so we can we can improve our international image our soft image by projecting all these positives of pakistan and other than that we should also have to uh basically extend the narrative that we have a very good multi party democracy system our democracy is vibrant our social media our international media our journalists are very much you know are doing their job and they have uh, a lot of you know structure and stuff so i think we should have to uh, use all these positives to create a much uh, bigger and a uh, positive impact at the international level okay currently pakistan is facing uh multiple challenges which are also very grave yes sir what do you know about them sir the current challenge at the right now that we are facing is the economic crisis because uh, sir our foreign reserves are continuously depleting because uh, right now our foreign reserves have been depleting to about depleted to about 4.8 billion dollars and uh, that is only enough to buy the imports of about uh, i think for 2 to 3 weeks so that has not been happened in history ever so this is a very severe problem and we should have to work towards that and in order to curtail uh, that economic crisis i think uh, we should have to trade in the things in which we have the comparative advantage for example right now we are trading in the things in which we do not have the comparative advantage let's let's take the example of textile in the textile sector uh, that uh, we have a lot of regional competitors like india is a regional competitor bangladesh is a regional competitor and uh, china is also a regional competitor so i think we should have to improve our trades in which we have competitive advantage and other than that we should also have to shed off the policy of quantitative easing because whenever a crisis hits uh, we rush towards the imf and we got the aid we got the necessary bust to basically a uh, necessary boom to keep our economy regular going and then uh, we forget about the macroeconomic and microeconomic reforms that we should have to introduce at the at certain levels so i think we should have to uh, work towards the economic security because right now i think when in the take the example of 1970s when uh, the, the fall of dhaka occurred so our state securitized our, our state basically prioritize the agenda that we should have to make pakistan a nuclear power okay, okay fine so, apart from this economic uh, issue problem which you are saying what about the political turbulence in the country yes sir political turbulence is uh, very much there so for that i think i would like to suggest that every party should have to work for the benefit of the country for the upholding of pakistan's constitution and they should have to uh, fulfill their duties uh, with respect that have been written in the constitution of uh, pakistan and they should have to fulfill their duties that have been defined in the principles of policy that of the in the articles of uh, the constitution of pakistan 1973 other than that politic, uh, politi- uh, political parties should have to held accountable for whatever they do there should be a strong accountability mechanism for the politicians and uh, for every person that play that tries to play havoc with the democracy of pakistan and other than that we should have to uh, let uh, let democracy breathe in pakistan uh, that is the main uh, what do you think about the product. present accountability mechanism present in the country sir uh, there are certain structures like there is nap there are certain structures of accountability mechanisms but uh, whenever a new government came they basically 
amend those accountability mechanisms according to their own interest. For example, uh, recently the government came and they introduced the NAB amendments in August and July. And basically these NAB amendments were to uh, tilt the balance of power toward in, in their own favor and to basically uh, pardon their uh, past help. Can you name some of the amendments, such amendments, controversial amendments? Sir, these amendments were, uh, I cannot uh, basically exactly recall, but their uh, gist was that they were uh, to uh, basically pardon those politicians which were, uh, and they, oh. they say that we will not let the NAB to uh, play, play political victimization of the basically the political. Okay, okay, if you don't know, say, I don't know. Take it. Okay. What do you know about the sixth extinction? What is sixth extinction about? Sixth extinction, sir. E extinction. This is regarding uh, climate change. Uh, sir, sixth extinction, sir, I do not know about it. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we have certain high commissions and then they are embassies. Why? Uh, sir, high commission are for the non-common uh, commonwealth countries while the uh, embassies are for the uh, so, sorry, high commissions are for the commonwealth countries and embassies are for the non-commonwealth oh, countries. Fine. Don't you think it's a colonial legacy? We should do away with it? Sir, it is a colonial legacy, but uh, as far as the structures are concerned, uh, they have uh, the same duties because uh, the high commission also have the same du duty as the embassy. These are just, I think, a uh, mere rhetoric and the mere uh, terms. Uh, it, uh, there's no the difference of function between the high commission and an embassy. Welcome to CSP's Academy for CSS PMS preparation. CSS PMS तहरीरी इम्तिहान के तमाम मजामी की ऑनलाइन और ऑन कैंपस तैयारी के साथ साथ सब्जेक्ट सिलेक्शन असाइनमेंट चेकिंग क्लास टेस्ट मॉक एग्जाम इंडिविजुअल टीचर डिस्कशन और फीडबैक सेशन का इनका किया जाएगा इसके अलावा एफ पी एस सी की तजवीज करदा बुक्स ऐसी बने मैरी नोट और सी एस पी पब्लिशर की बेहतरीन बुक्स मुहैया की जाएंगी Register now at 0316-570-1593. Okay. What 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 prospects do do you you foresee for the normalization of of uh, situation in in Afghanistan? Sir, first of all, we should have to keep in mind the factor that the peace in Afghanistan is uh, non-negotiable for Pakistan because it is a prerequisite for the successful implementation of the project of CPAC because if the Afghanistan is not secure then uh, we are not uh, be able to basically uh, materialize our aspirations and our aims as far as CPAC is concerned. So for that first our first priority should have to be negotiation, arbitrations and conciliation with the Afghan government that is there because uh, right now, in the current scenario, Afghan Taliban is a reality. So we cannot, you know, veer away from that reality. We should have to accept them and we should have to uh, launch very, uh, you know, a robust and mechanism of negotiations with them. And other than that, secondly, we should also have to involve United States of America in that because uh, U.S. should also have to realize that uh, blaming Pakistan and always... Uh, uh, putting all the pressure on Pakistan uh, with uh, basically as far as its uh, failure in Afghanistan is concerned is a wrong policy and uh, US has a lot of stakes in the Afghanistan and it is a responsibility of the United States to be the mediator as far as the negotiation with Afghanistan and Pakistan is concerned. Okay, okay. What is the forest to land ratio in Pakistan? Forest uh, land uh, ratio? Sir, as far as I know there is about 4.2 to 5 percent. 4.2 to 5 percent. Can you name name some of the forests of our country and where they yes, are situated? Sir. Uh, sir, the first one is the Changa Manga Forest that is in the Lahore, and then there is the I think one is in the uh, this is the, this is the one that I where Juniper down. Forest. Sir, I have heard of its name, but I do not know where it is located. Farwan uh, Nazir, uh, your first option is Foreign Service. Yes, ma'am. Um, could you tell me uh, what is a foreign service officer expected to do? Yes, ma'am. Uh, being a foreign uh, servant of uh, Pakistan, we have to first of all uh, serve in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as assistant director, and then uh, we will be posted in uh, various you know missions and uh, as an attaches or as uh, as uh, basically assistant to the secretary and the foreign ambassadors. That that will be our duty and. Other than that, we have to assist the policy makers in the 
uh, first of all in the making of policies and then in, in the implementation of policies that is uh, our main duty as far as the civil service uh, act of 1973 uh, is concerned and as far as the article 240a of the pakistan's constitution is concerned so uh, that will be our main policy that we have, will have to assist our uh, basically bosses in the implementation and making of policies and uh, we have to uphold the Pakistan's constitutional values and the Pakistan uh, soft uh, basically image as, uh, as the sir has earlier told us that we have to uphold Pakistan's soft image in the international scenario in the international world and we have to uh, resolve the issue with uh, you know use of diplomacy, uh, conciliation, arbitration and mediation. Uh, can you tell me the structure of an embassy? Uh, Ma'am, the uh, embassy has the first of all it has an ambassador, uh, then there are the uh, there are attaches, and then there is the uh, basically uh, certain missions that is uh, sent to different countries for the uh, for certain specific. No, I'm talking about the structure of the embassy. Number one is ambassador. Then what? Yeah, I don't know about it because I never said it. Your favorite person is Indira Gandhi. Yes, ma'am, because. Uh, uh, Keeping her political and keeping her entire Pakistan stance aside, uh, she did what she thought was right for her country. In 1973, uh, she, she she wanted uh, she said that she is going to break Pakistan into into two, and she did it. Despite pressure from the United States of America, at that time, United States President Richard Nixon wrote letters and to her that she should have to exercise restraint in his mission as far as the operation uh, breaking of Pakistan into two parts is concerned but she didn't restrain and she did it and when uh, the uh, when the uh, when the separatist movement in the six started she launched operation blue star and she basically preserved the uh, security and preserved the autonomy of the country so uh, being uh, foreign services, uh, being in the foreign services of Pakistan, I would like to be. I would like to be the same. I would like to project the interest of my country as far, no matter what are the circumstances, and I, I would like to be the like her. Like if there is a, basically, I would like to project the interest of my country, no matter what are the circumstances, and in any way, keeping uh, in mind my constitutional duties and my uh, basically. So breaking up of other countries and not yes. listening to anyone is yes, yes, part of your you hero model. Very much right. There is not the part of my model. I the basically the purpose is to convey that she thought that she is going to do it and she did it. It was it seems like quite impossible in that current world that you are trying to break a country into two. But this is just an example. For example, we can take motivation like we will uh, from her like we will we are going to resolve the Kashmir issue. So, like, it seems impossible in the current scenario, but uh, taking that motivation, it is not. It does not seem to be impossible. But she didn't resolve Kashmir issue. Yes, sir. she yes, created Khalistan issue. Yes, more. I am just trying to. I am just trying to say that taking her motivation, I, we can apply it into the Kashmir issue. Your favorite book is Prisoners of Geography. Yes, ma'am. Do you think Pakistan is a prisoner of geography? Yes, ma'am. Of course, Pakistan has been. Uh, at, at, a, at a front line of the great powers due to its geography and we have uh, to face a lot of difficulties we have been uh, we have dragged into uh, the wars that were not uh, not ours and we have to fight the wars that are not ours uh, due to the our, ge our geography first in the 1979 when the france soviet war started and then secondly in the war on war on terror so we have been dragged into the wars that was not started by us and we have to pay a heavy price for that uh, right now we have been uh, blamed for perpe uh, perpetuating terrorism but uh, we have we have not we are the victims of terrorism our country has faced about 75 billion dollar damage as a result of terrorism uh, about uh, more than uh, 75000 people lost their lives as a result of terrorism and the collateral and the emotional damage is much more than that and it is not measurable so yes we have been the prisoners of geography and we have uh, faced a lot of uh, you know turbulences within our country due to that uh, uh, geographical uh, deadlock but it is the right with the with the CPAC. It is the right time that you that uh, that we basically uh, get out of that uh, prisoner dilemma and we could work for the uh, basically that we could use that uh, geostrategic location of Pakistan in the right manner uh, by employing the politics of uh, basically by converging the politics of geostrategic and uh, geoeconomy and uh, by that basically basically the recently the uh, our government has also said that they are going to. Uh, 
prioritize the geoeconomics to basically curb that prisoners of geography dilemma that we were facing in the past. Thank you. I will give the floor to my colleague here. Join CSPs, where we believe that your dreams are our mission. So let us be your partners in this transformative journey as we equip you with knowledge, confidence and resilience required to emerge as CSS stoppers. Contact us on our given WhatsApp number 0316-570-1593 or visit our website www.csps.com.pk Salva, why do, you like, why do you want to join civil service of Pakistan? So, uh, for to, uh, basically, to be a part of any anything, you have uh, three sort of motivation. So, first, uh, basically, drives from your inner self. This is, this is the personal motivation. While the second one is the social motivation, like that drives from the social scenarios that you see around yourself. And the third is the international motivation. So, as far as my case is concerned, my personal motivation is, sir, uh, being a citizen of Pakistan and being a, a human being, uh, all of us want to drive, drive and all of us want to uh, achieve good things in life. So yes, I do want job security. I do want a job where I have, where I will be at a position uh, to change the life of people and to uh, basically uh, create an impact. So this is my personal motivation coming towards the social motivation. So growing up, I have seen a lot of problems in my country. Our people are suffering at a lot of scales. For example, there are social problems, there are economic problems, then there is unemployment, and then there is a deadly cycle of poverty. And due to the poverty, people have been trapped in a basically in a food and in a money cycle. They are not able to exert their full potential due to it. Social factors of my of my country, and the international motivation comes from the fact that uh, we have. Uh, being a being a country, we have uh, done a lot to curb the terrorism. Uh, we have done a lot to basically to be a responsible okay. Oh, okay, uh, member of the international community. Okay, Farah. You said poetry is your uh, hobby, and then you also have studied Punjabi. So, what's the uh, thinking paradigm of Bulesha? So the, what is he trying to tell us? Yes, the thinking paradigm of Bulesha is about uh, uh, he just uh, do not fear to say the truth. It's about uh, uh, he says that mu ai gal mu ai to rehda kone he always he is always uh, basically uh, uh, he is always uh, bas not uh, not fear not afraid of speaking the truth so this is the main thing in his poetry and uh, in his poetry it also reflects his love for his murshid too and his, his love his love for the sufism and his love for the almighty and uh, you have also studied criminology yes sir so what is the theory of lebrosco about crime the theory of Labrosco, sir, right now I cannot recall it. Okay, you have also studied UN history. Uh, would you like to tell us that we had such a tall figures in the uh, history of America, you know, like Abraham Lincoln yes, and George Washington. Yes, sir. So how come people like Trump, they become the president of uh, USA in such a small democratic system? You know? uh, the, if the rise of the Trump to the power in the America is linked with the rise of the far right movement in the West, in the Europe the rise of populist leaders because at that time uh, people of uh, there is a large debate in the america regarding the immigrants that the immigrants should not be allowed to enter in the american land and other than that people uh, were also basically facing a lot of problems they were saying that our problems at home are not uh, addressing are not getting addressed so how come the the government is allowed immigrants and the people from other ethnicities and other countries are allowed to come in our country so basically he tapped on the the major issues that the and the major uh, uh, frustration among the people of the america and he, that's why he lost to power and other than that uh, he basically uh, started the movement uh, started the emotions of uh, far right nationalism within the americans uh, because uh, in, if we look at the previous uh, tenures, and uh, there was the uh, there was benign patriotism within the americans but he morphed that benign uh, patriotism into ultra shamanistic nationalism so that's why he was able to get a, such a huge uh, liking in the america thank you give your career a boost with css pms preparation from civil services preparatory school join css pms for on campus and online classes join us for your bright future civil services preparatory school jitan markaz islamabad register now at 0316 570 1593
Thank you, sir. Well, for uh, what is concert of Europe? And do you think there is any connection between concert of Europe and the establishment of United Nations organization? Uh, sir, okay. I do not know about concert of Europe. I don't, I don't have studied about You've it. Read, you studied international relations. So you are subject. From which university you did sir, study? I do have studied it in 2016, and it, but I, I can't recall it right now. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, Farwar, you should be very brief and tell uh, what do you think U.S. non-proliferation treaty toward Iran and North Korea is justified? Yeah, if we look at the history of the non-proliferation regime, so it says that any state that had acquired the nuclear weapon after 1960s will not be a credible nuclear power in the international state in the international stage. So, if as far as the nuclear program of Iran and the North Korea is concerned, uh, they have been rolled back by the uh, U.S. and by the great powers so many times. For example, uh, United, uh, Iran was allowed to start its nuclear program in 1957 when the Eisenhower speech items for peace and we are going to give stay. He says that basically we are going to give the states that are uh, that that want to use nuclear energy for the technological and for the peaceful purposes. So under that, Iran got some sort of nuclear reactors, uh, and in 1967 it saw it got some sort of help from Dr. Abdul Qadir Khan too. But in 1980s the whole scenario changed. Uh, so well, after that there were so many sanctions of on Iran nuclear program. So the the sanctions on Iran nuclear programs have been changing with the changing interest of United States of America. When they had good relations with uh, United States of America, they led the Iran to pursue its nuclear weapon program. But when the relationship deteriorated, they basically uh, put a lot of sanctions on Iranian nuclear program. And they are uh, basically, they will not let Iran to be a nuclear power because that will disturb the uh, whole strategic balance of power in the Middle East because right now Israel ha Israel is the main leader in the Middle East. So if Iran becomes a nuclear power, it will disturb that whole balance and they will have a regional competitor. They will have to deal with Israel and as well as, as Iran and in that scenario. And as far as the nuclear program of North Korea is concerned, it is basically anti-US. The main purpose of the North Korean nuclear program is to uh, basically curtail the United States uh, expansionist emissions in the region and uh, they have also been a part of uh, NPT for a shorter period of time but afterwards they basically refused that we are not going to let United States of America, we are not going to let the NPT personnel and the inspectors to inspect our nuclear program because it is an infringement of uh, our national sovereignty. So basically, uh, their, uh, their nuclear programs have been motivated by the okay. changing regional interest of United States. Okay, Farwa, you should be very objective in your answers. Okay, not so much objective, it's objective. Okay, okay, uh, how do you see John Locke contributed toward the making of US Constitution? The, the U.S. Constitution, uh, the role of John Locke is in the U.S. Constitution is uh, very much important uh, because he was the major proponent of democracy. The, the he was the major proponent of uh, the democratic values, the liberal values, uh, uh, liberty, equality, and fraternity. So, as far as these uh, three uh, terms are concerned, it basically the U.S. Constitu Constitution embraced those the ideas and principles of John Locke in a very objective manner. Okay, tell me when uh, All India Muslim League incorporated idea of self-rule in its political manifesto. So the idea of the self-rule was incorporated in about 1930s when the after the Hutba Ilabad, as far as I know. Okay, uh, what was the reaction of Indian National Congress toward uh, Government of Indian Council Act 1935? Uh, the reaction of uh, basically Indian National Congress was not uh, so promising. Uh, they they basically uh, opposed it in a in a lot of uh, ways. They said that it will uh, it will not be beneficial for the Hindus of India. It will it will uh, basically drag the uh, British rule uh, further in the Indian subcontinent because they wanted at that time that India the British should have to go home and they would let the uh, Indians govern their country without even uh, basically breaking the country. Okay, fine. This is my last question. Uh, how you see Woodrow Wilson's 14 points impact on Indian history? Yes, sir. There is a lot of impact of Woodrow Wilson's how? Uh, 14 uh, impact in the Indian subcontinent history. There has been a lot of speculations that 
قائد اعظم محمد علی جناح 14 پوائنٹس وار لارجلی امپیکٹڈ بائی دا وڈرو ولسن 14 پوائنٹس دیٹ ہی گیو ایم اسکنگ انٹرنیشنل ریلیشنز پرسپیکٹو ان دا پرسپیکٹو آف انٹرنیشنل ریلیشنز یس سر دیز ار بیسیکلی دا آن دا بیسس اف وڈرو ولسن 14 پوائنٹس یو ایس واز ناٹ الاؤڈ ٹو جوائن دا لیگ اف نیشنز بیکاز اٹ سیز دیٹ فرسٹ اف آل یو ایس شوڈ ہیو ٹو مینٹین دا نیوٹریلٹی اف نیوٹریلٹی ایٹ ہوم اٹ شوڈ ہیو ٹو ورک فار اٹس امپیکٹ آن انڈین ہسٹری انڈین ہسٹری سر It propelled Kazakh Muhammad Ali Jinnah to issue his uh, 14 points as I have earlier told in 1929. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Fabo. Interview is over. Now, we will tell you how to interview you. How did you interview you? I don't know. No, tell me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, you are a good judge. Yes. Hmm? <laughs> آپ کی اسپیکنگ جو ہے اسپیچ جو ہے نا اس میں وہ ہے مطلب روانی بہت زیادہ تیزی سے آپ بات کرتی ہیں لگتا ہے کہ یہ رٹا ہوا ہے یا کچھ اس طرح سے ہے تو اس کو ذرا مینیج کریں اس کو ریگولیٹ کریں اپنی اسپیچ کو اس کو پوز دیں مطلب اس طرح سے زیادہ پریزنٹیبل بنائیں اور پھر کچھ پروناؤنسیشن کا بھی ایشوز ہیں آپ کے اس کو بھی آپ ذرا ٹھیک کریں شیشے کے سامنے کھڑے کھڑے ہو کر آپ دیکھیں کہ آپ اپنے جو ہے اس کی اسپیڈ کی کوالٹی کو کیسے امپروو کر سکتے ہیں یہ یہ ہے آپ کا جو ہے ایک ڈرا بیک ہے جس کو آپ نے کرنا ہے نالج گیپ ہے نالج گیپ ہے جو ہے جو ہے نا نیپ کے بارے میں آپ کو کوئی زیادہ علم نہیں تھا اس کی پروویژنز جو امینڈمنٹس ہوئی ہیں پھر فارسٹ کے بارے میں آپ نے ایک بتایا پاکستان میں پانچ چھ فارسٹ ہیں دین نون فارسٹ کہاں کیا ہیں ٹھیک ہے اور اپنے کوشچنس کو پرولانگ نہ کریں پلیز ٹرائی ٹو بی اسپیسیفک ٹو دا پوائنٹ ہو نا آپ پرولانگ کر دیتے ہیں پھیلا دیتے ہیں بہت نا پھر وہ صحیح نہیں آتا ہوتا ٹھیک ہے ٹھیک ہے تھینک یو سو مچ ایز فیئر ایز دا نالج از کنسرن دیر از لاٹ آف نالج گیپ دا بیسک پرابلم دیٹ ساؤتھ صاحب از لوڈنگ ٹو از رینٹنگ یو نو وٹ اٹ مینس رینٹنگ وٹ از رینٹنگ اسپیکنگ ود آؤٹ فیکٹس and going on on it is small ranting and you are doing that uh, so that is a not good idea you should have a total focused approach listen to the question i asked you the hierarchy of an embassy and you were talking about uh, assistant director and you were talking about you know esta code and things like that which were not relevant to the question that i had asked So you go on giving answers without thinking what the question was, which is very difficult for the panel to address. We have to give you half an hour, we have given you 40 minutes and uh, still we don't know what you know because you never spoke of the main points. So please, when you go home, we are here to not criticize you, but to help you improve. In doing so, I would say that Firstly, practice to listen to questions, write down the points and focus your answer on the points that you have instead of going left, right and center without really targeting your question, All right? So you have the potential, read newspapers, be updated about information and also In your introduction, we didn't ask you the introduction today, but please write one pager. Focus on what you need the panel to know about you. And when you come to personalities, bring personalities that you can defend. The reasons you gave for liking Indra Gandhi uh, were paradoxical for any role model. So if you had taken, actually you have not studied her personality. You're only talking about her political role. What was she as a woman? What was she as a daughter? What was she as a mother? What was she as a political leader? What was she as international player? You have no idea. Please focus on it. When you write about a personality, you should know all the facts about the person, right? Uh, but I'm confident you can do well. Uh, just focus a little more. I would leave it to my colleague. Thank you, Farva. You did. Uh, you can do much better. 
ठीक है और जब आप इधर इंटरव्यू देने में आए ना मैंने पिछले भी कैंडिडेट को कहा था एक तो आपने पीछे होकर बैठना है टेक लगाया आप पीछे बिल्कुल आराम से ऐसे टेक लगा के और हमें साथ ना बड़ी कॉन्फिडेंटली आपने बात कर दी हमारे साथ ठीक है जैसे हम हैं ही नहीं और आपको सब कुछ आता है और बड़ी अच्छी बात की उन्होंने कि कहाँ शुरू करना है कहाँ ख़त्म करना है ये बहुत ज़रूरी है मसन आपसे अगर हम ये पूछें आप सिविल सर्विसेज में क्यों जाना चाह रही तो आपका सिंपल जवाब होना चाहिए जी मेरा पैशन है मैं चीज़ें इम्प्रूव करना चाहती हूँ मैं समझती हूँ कि मैं कंट्रीब्यूट कर सकती हूँ आता आप फॉरन सर्विस में क्यों जाना चाहती हैं मैं एक सवाल हुआ था तो आप कह सकती थी मैं इन्वेस्टमेंट पाकिस्तान की ठीक करूँगी एम ठीक करूँगी और मैं जाके बताऊँगी कि पाकिस्तान की जो खातून है वो कितना अच्छा काम कर सकती है तो छोटे छोटे आंसर्स एक्सप्रेशन डेवलप करें ठीक है ना हमारी तरफ देखें मुस्कुराएँ ठीक है ना घबराएं ना बिल्कुल अगर आप और सांस सही लेना है आपने लेकिन मैंने लास्ट कैंडिडेट को भी ये कहा था तो यू हैव टू बी कॉन्फिडेंट बेसिकली बेशक जीते या हारें लेकिन नजर आए कि आप बहुत अच्छी क्रिकेटर हैं बहुत अच्छी बोल इसी तरह आप टी वी पर देखें जिस सब मैम बोलती हैं कितने ठहर ठहर के ये आपने बोल रहे हैं एंकर्स को देखें कैसे बोल रही हैं जो हमारे पब्लिक स्पीकरस हैं बहुत अच्छी खातून उनको देखें कैसे बोल रहे हैं तो यू हैव शीशे के सामने खड़े होकर देखें आपको बड़ा फ़र्क पड़ेगा और ये छोटी छोटी चीज़ें हैं फॉर एग्जांपल अगर बुल्ले शाह का आपने अच्छा जवाब दिया लेकिन आपने क्रिमिनोलॉजी अगर पढ़ी है तो पाँच दस जो मेजर लोग हैं उनकी बातें आपको आनी चाहिए और थोड़ी सी आप मुख्तर से आप बात कर सकती हैं फिर आप उसको मज़ीद एड ट्रम्प का आपने अच्छा जवाब दिया वो देट वॉज गुड ओके बुल्ले शाह का भी ठीक था बट दी बेस्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस इंटरव्यू इज यू मे बी हैविंग नॉलेज क्या आप इस वक्त हमें प्रजेंट कर सकती हैं हमारे सवाल का जवाब का जवाब बन सकती हूँ वो आपने देखना है ठीक है ना तो कॉन्फिडेंटली बिल्कुल सीधा होकर बैठना है कॉन्फिडेंट जैसे कि यू आर द बॉस ऑफ दिस फॉर्म एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू हेल्प यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच वेल फेवा वर्दी पैनलिस्ट ने आपको जो सबसे ज्यादा चीज पॉइंट आउट की वो आप बहुत ज्यादा लेंथी आंसर सब्जेक्टिव ओपिनियन और इन द एंड नो बडी नोज वट यू सेंग एक चीज ये चीज थोड़ा सा इसको कैटर करें वेन यू वुड हैव ए सॉलिड नॉलेज यू वुड बी वेरी ऑब्जेक्टिव और उसके लिए क्वेश्चन सुनना इंपॉर्टेंट पॉजिटिव थिंग इज यू हैव ए गुड कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स योर नॉलेज कंपेरेटिवली बेटर इन इंटरनेशनल एशियन यू एस हिस्ट्री लेकिन दूसरे सब्जेक्ट में आपके ऑप्शन लाइक क्रिमिनोलॉजी इन चीज़ों को भी देखिए कंट्रोवर्शियल मैडम ने बता दिया था पर्सनैलिटी चूज ना करें यू कैन नॉट डिफेंड हर इन ऑपरेशन वो नीला साका तारा जो है यू आर बट ऑफ पंजाबी पढ़ी हुई है आपने तो ऑपरेशन ब्लू स्टार वो उसमें डिफेंड करना भी बड़ा मुश्किल हो जाता है और बहुत सारे इश्यूज के ऊपर तो इनको थोड़ा सा अपना नोटबुक बना के वन पेजेस थोड़ी सी चीज़ों को ऑब्जेक्टिव भी देखें चले ठीक है